Users love apps with depth, dimension, and realism. One of the easiest yet effective ways to achieve this is shadows. For a long time, our mechanisms for rendering shadows were constrained to different elevation levels. While you can still leverage these presets, they historically lacked a straightforward path for fine-grained control that you have in popular design tools. However, our latest Compose APIs now grant us a great level of precision with two new powerful modifiers, drop shadows and inner shadows. In the next few minutes, we will go beyond rudimentary elevation to construct truly delightful user interfaces all through shadows. All right, let's dive in. Typically, design specs for shadows revolve around four fundamental parameters. These include the X and Y offsets, the blur radius, the spread, and of course, the color. The drop shadow modifier provides an interface for you to control each of these aspects through its shadow parameter. Let's look at how to use drop shadow. The radius parameter dictates the softness and diffusion of your blur. Spread controls the expansion or contraction of the shadow's geometry. Color allows you to define the shadow's tint. And offset precisely positions the shadow's geometry along the X and Y axes. The shape parameter helps define the shadow's overall contour. This can be a standard rounded corner shape as seen in this example, or it can use any geometry such as the distinctive cookie nine-sided shape introduced with our recent Material Expressive APIs. Now to create the inverse effect, you can use inner shadow. This creates the illusion that an element is recessed or pressed into the underlying surface. It is crucial to remember the rendering order. You must first draw your background content and then apply the inner shadow modifier to achieve the desired concave appearance. The true potential of these modifiers is unlocked when you realize they can be layered. Instead of a single shadow, you can compose multiple shadows sequentially each with distinct colors, blurs, and offsets. This technique enables a vast spectrum of effects from subtle highlights to the vibrant, colorful glows seen here. To begin with, we apply the first layer of our drop shadow. Next, we chain a second drop shadow layer on top of it with slightly different offsets. Then, we apply the background color to the component. And finally, we apply the inner shadow modifiers. This deliberate chaining of drop and inner shadows is what produces the depth effect we are aiming for. While static shadows are effective, dynamic shadows are way more exciting. By integrating our shadow properties with Compose's animation APIs, we can make our UI respond directly to user interaction. So when a user presses a button, the shadow can change to provide instantaneous feedback. To achieve this effect, we first define an outer box and attach a clickable modifier to it. We then declare the start and end states for the various parameters we intend to animate. To ensure all animations are perfectly synchronized, we leverage update transition and provide it with the desired target state. Here, we define our button press animation specification which will control the timing and easing of the transition. With the different parameters now applied, we can see this fluid animation. We have successfully evolved a static component into an interactive one that uses animated shadows to produce a convincing pressed effect. Once you are comfortable with these core techniques, you can combine them to realize popular design trends, including realistic lighting, neomorphism, and neobrutalism. Let's explore a few. Beginning with emulating realistic lighting. To achieve an effect like this, we must consider how light behaves in the physical world. 
you typically observe a crisp, direct shadow cast by a primary light source, as well as a softer, more diffuse ambient shadow. We can replicate this by stacking multiple drop shadow and inner shadow instances with varied properties. First, we apply two chain drop shadow modifiers with distinct properties, followed by a background modifier. And to conclude, we apply chained inner shadow modifiers to forge the metallic rim effect around the component's edge. With these new modifiers, neomorphism becomes entirely achievable. This trend is characterized by a soft extruded appearance that seems to emerge organically from the background. This technique hinges on an element that shares the same color as its background and then applying two faint opposing shadows, a light one from one corner and a dark one from the opposite. Conversely, the neo-brutalist style champions high contrast, blocky layouts, standout color palettes and thick assertive borders. To capture this effect, use a drop shadow with zero blur and a hard distinct offset. And you might be wondering about gradient shadows. Yes, that's possible too. Your shadows are not confined to solid colors. The Shadow API accepts a brush, which allows you to create gradient shadows. We've covered the basic mechanisms of drop shadow and inner shadow, learned how to layer and animate them. When you combine these elements, you can create stunning effects from a breathing, glowing aura to a fully interactive and expressive user interface. I encourage you to experiment with these modifiers in your own projects. You can find the complete source code for all of today's examples at the link provided in the description. Thanks for watching. Happy composing. <laughs>